Hi there. In the last episode, we were looking into the software architecture. That was pretty cool and it led us to use Flutter as the framework and Dart as the language. We were now going to learn how to write our first lines of code. So this is Edil. Hello. <laughs> what is your goal to teach us in this video? Well, we are going to do a very simple app which consists of a bar, an image, and when you click on the image, it's going to open the YouTube link. So before we hit it, what do we need? Well, we do need to have Flutter and Android Studio. Flutter is the framework that we are going to use, mm -hmm. and Android Studio is the IDE that we will build using. So you find links in the description below where to download it. So this is Android Studio. Here we already kind of set up our project. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we don't really need to worry about too much because Flutter takes care of everything for us. The main page consists of parts too. For example, mm -hmm. we always have the on top this bar. You can decide how the app bar should look like. So if you want, you can show a text here mm -hmm. where we see the app's name and so on. Think it of the head of a person, right? right. So this is the app bar, right? And we mm -hmm. also have the body part of the rest. So if you want, we can also start to shape the body. All right. All right. Flutter already has lots of components for but buttons, mm -hmm. and we can just use one of them, which is raise button. It just looks like this. <laughs> oh, wow. That's not a fancy button at <laughs> That's all. That's not a fancy button, right? <laughs> yes. And, and we want to do fancier stuff, right? Yeah, we do. Yes. So let's introduce a fancier widget that we can use. So here we have this already defined the spinning image. Mm -hmm. So we can actually use the spinning image. So I will just shortly change the name of it, spinning. So now mm -hmm. let's try what we did. Let's see. Nice. Well, there you go. Now we have a container and we have our image in it. <laughs> cool, so that is uh, a button now. This is not a button yet. It's just a container with an image. Okay. We will need to do a little bit more to make it a button. Mm -hmm. I quite like the, their logical wording for things like container, it's a thing containing something and then just write decoration. It's like putting a flower into your apartment or whatever. And instead of a flower, we put a photo in it to make it pretty. Now you can add components to the container. These are like, your, like the children of the container, right? All right. So f the keyword for this is child. So you will have a child widget. So we can say that fit my image in the container. All right. All right. For this, you can use this one, um, fit. And I have this box fit with, for example. Let's try what we will get. Nice. Now we have a white text at the bottom of our container. I'm starting to understand that it's sort of like a warehouse where you can build your own car. If you're lazy, you can grab a whole car door, just duck into your car. But if you want to customize it, you can grab just a frame of the car door, the size of window you want to have, maybe a custom button that makes it go bzz, bzz, bzz. And then the more you customize it, the more complex it gets. Well, now we are going to add some functionality. So as you can see right now, we have just a container, which you mm -hmm. can think like a box that holds an image and text in it. Mm -hmm. But there's not much functionality to it. No. What we want is when the user clicks on this image, yeah. we want to actually do something, right? Yeah. Well, Flutter actually has a component for this and it's called Gesture Detector. Gesture Detect, like when you're touching your smartphone, like detecting a burglar going into a flat, you know, <laughs> you have it in one room. And if you have a second button, you need sort of to have another burglar detector in that room. We are not done with this gesture detector yet. Right. Or in your words, burglar detector. Yeah. Right. So it's actually the same. You can decide when to call the police. Mm -hmm. So breaking the window is a little bit like tabbing on the image. Like that. Like tabbing, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we are going to do. We will take action when the user taps on our container. And for this, we have also this keyword, which is actually on tap. That's smooth. So it's like, what should I do? on the action tab, mm -hmm. right? And here we will tell what action it should take. So we will kind of say it with a function. And afterwards we will tell what the code should do, the action that it should take mm -hmm. when there's a tab. Yes. So for an example, we can say, just print simply tapped. That's it. That's all we want to see. We see now here, tapped. 
Oh, cool. There you go. So we are now actually. I can We tap actually all the time. know that gesture detector <laughs> is taking the right action. And if I click outside of the photo, yeah, nothing happens. Yes, That's because cool. it's not the gesture detector. Mm -hmm. What we want is actually we want to open a YouTube link, right? And to do this, Flutter uh, has a library that we can use, which is called the URL launcher. Mm -hmm. All right. And after we are adding it here, we basically import it in our file. Mm -hmm. And now we can use the actions that this library gives us. Grab it with the entire link or? Yes, yes, that's true. Do you want to try out the app? Yeah, let's see if it works. Clicking. I hope you enjoyed what Edel was teaching me and us, and I hope you're feeling more confident to maybe try code a little bit by yourself. You know, you have that warehouse, you get pre-manufactured parts, you could choose them, you could change them, and you really don't have to write a million zeros and ones to do everything from scratch. And if not, if you need some more inspiration, you should check out the next video where we're gonna dig much deeper into the coding and where the people here are going to really build this app properly. Till next time, ciao.